So next we're going to talk about the glue pot assembly and what is all involved with that. So as you can see, here's the cover. This is where we actually add our glue pellets for the glue pot assembly. And this is the spindle assembly that runs down inside the glue pot that actually applies the glue to the edge of the board. So once again, this knob here is what adjusts the glue flow to the spindle assembly. So the Fotec controller here is what actually runs the temperature for our glue pod assembly. And as you can see, we currently have 190 degrees, which is in the green, as our set point. And what you see here in the red is the process variable or the actual temperature of the glue as it's heating up. So now I'd like to talk about the glue that we use for this machine. So this machine was designed in mind with the Jowatt glue, which is the T27707. And this is a specific glue for the edge bander assembly. So we highly recommend that you don't use anything other than the Jowalt T27707 glue because you may run into issues with your edge bander by using different types of glue. So we recommend that you keep the glue level approximately three quarters of an inch from the top edge of the assembly. So I'm just gonna add a few more pellets to the glue pot. Put the lid back on there and we recommend that you keep the lid on there otherwise you end up with sawdust inside your glue which will also cause more problems for you down the road. So I'd like to reiterate this knob here which adjusts the whole glue pot assembly to move forward and aft in relationship to the edge of the board. So next I'd like to bring your attention to the motor assembly here which runs your spindle for your glue pot. And so that is located right here. And then you have your whole coupling drive assembly that runs up above. And then above that is a junction box located right here, which houses all the wiring for your heater assembly. So in future events, we will talk more about the heater assembly. So last but not least, I just want to bring your attention to the KM6 contactor, which is located right here. And that clicking sound that you will hear as your machine is heating up is that contactor opening and closing, which controls the temperature to your glue pot assembly. So if you do not hear that contactor opening and closing, then we know that we either have an issue with the contactor or the wiring to the contactor. So next I'd like to talk about the Fotec controller itself because we have had many customer questions about the settings to the Fotec controller. So the Fotec controller comes factory set. There should never really be any need to adjust the controller. But some customers choose to use a different glue type than recommended. That'll involve changing the set point to the controller. I'll walk you through the proper way to change the temperature settings without affecting other parameters that shouldn't be changed. So I want to bring your attention to the set point that's currently here on the left. And what happens is so a customer is using a different glue, the set point may be 140 degrees. And so the customer wants to change that temperature to 140. So without having any information, he is going to push on the down arrow and hold it with the effort to try and change that set point of 190 to 140. So as I press that in and I hold that in thinking that's going to change it, what I have done is I have just turned the Fotec controller into the off position. So in order to resolve that problem, what we want to do is hold this button in for three seconds, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, and hence the Fotec controller comes back on again. So what I would like to say about the Fotec controller, if you would like to make a change for the set point, that when you do press the buttons that you just want to index them for just a second as you're pressing in and release. Otherwise, you may take the controller into parameter settings where you're, you don't want to be making changes to the programming. So say we want to change, make a change for the set point here. So I'm just going to press the set point for just a second. 
And then as you can see, the tense is flashing on and off, which means, okay, I can now make a change for that value there in the tense. So I'll hit the up arrow and we'll index it up to five. And as you can see, I'm pressing it five times in order to get it there. So then if we want to change the value in the ones column, we just hit the F button or the arrow to the left, which then moves it to the next setting. And so then you can go ahead and change that value say I want it to be five also. So now that we have 185.5 and then changing the next value, we'll say we want that also set at five. So then we'll go ahead and arrow down and that is set at five. And then our next value then will be 100. And if that's the value that we want, we hit the set button for just a second. And then we have our new set point at 155.5. So now I want to bring your attention to the standby light, which is currently on, which means at that point, the Photac controller will not heat up past 150 degrees. And so in order to take it out of standby, you just have to hit one of the motor function buttons and that'll basically bring it out of standby and back into the heat mode. Now I want to bring your attention to the amber LED in the lower right hand corner. When that light is on, that indicates that the KM6 contactor is in the closed position, which means that the glue pot is currently being heated. So I want to bring your attention now to the parameter setting, and I want you to be able to see whether the uh, parameter setting is in the locked mode or the unlocked mode. So in order to look at the parameter setting, you have to press and hold both the set key and the F key simultaneously and hold them in for five seconds. So one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, well. So currently we have a one as an indicator here and we wanna make sure that this is the state that the controller is in because if it is in the zero mode, then that means that your parameter settings can be accessed inside the controller, which you don't want to be there because you can make changes to the parameter settings, which will change how your controller actually functions in relationship to your glue pot assembly. So we're going to change this back to one. Oops, we're at two. We want to be at one and then just hit your set button. And then that puts the controller back into normal operation mode. This is our set point, 190 degrees centigrade, and this is our process variable at which the temperature is currently at the glue pot assembly. We're at 150 degrees. So that noise that you hear in the background, that clicking of the on and off, is the contactor, the KM6 contactor that is, when it's in the closed position, is actually putting heat to the uh, glue pot assembly. So in these lights down here are indication when that yellow light comes on that's indicating that that contactor is in the closed position and is currently heating the glue pot assembly. We're in the preheat for the Fotec controller which is heating our glue pot assembly. Uh, once our temperature is within the range of 170 to 180 degrees, the spindle assembly will come on, and that is all calculated and determined through the PLC system. None of the other motor functions will turn on either until the glue spindle assembly has turned on. So as our Fotec controller is currently heating up, we're gonna be looking at about 180 degrees at which point the spindle assembly will turn on. If this heats up all the way to 190 degrees and your spindle has not turned on, then it could possibly be because our door switch here isn't satisfied for the panel feeder. We also have a door switch here on the back side uh, for the cover assembly. And then there is a pressure switch, which we looked at in a previous video, um, which needs to be satisfied as well. So you need to make sure that you have your air compressor on, that it's hooked up, and that you have approximately 100 PSI air supply pressure to the machine. Look at page 74 in your manual, and that will bring you to an electrical diagram. And looking at this top rung here, this basically tells us all the things that need to be satisfied in order for this machine to run effectively. So you have your uh, five overload, QM1 through QM5, 
your stop switch, that needs to be in the depressed position. Uh, and then you have your SQ1 and your SQ2, which are your two intrinsic safety switches. Uh, your SP1, which is your pressure switch in the back. And once all those are satisfied, then the machine will be ready to run. So we've removed the cover assembly at this point, just for illustration purposes only. Once again, I just want to bring your attention to these two switches here. I currently have them in um, bypass mode, so to speak. I removed the striker off of the panel feeder that you can see right here. As I pull that off, you heard that pressure switch release. That means that none of the other operating motors will will not run until this switch is satisfied. So as I go ahead and put that back into place, you heard that click and that means that that pressure switch assembly is now satisfied. And once we hit 180 degrees, then the spindle assembly will come on and all our motor functions will be ready to run at that point. So we're gonna talk about the first button here on the control panel, which initializes power for the guillotine assembly to work properly. So as I press on this switch, it is putting power from the PLC to this first roller switch that you see right here on the table assembly. So as I press in on the switch, that all I'm doing right now is just simulating this panel right here rolling over the tabletop is that panel continues forward and the end of the board allows this switch to release at that point it will actuate the guillotine assembly which i will do here momentarily so what i'd like to demonstrate here is uh, at times we end up with glue on our uh, roller assemblies or different components um, as long as you're not trying to do it uh, around the uh, glue pot when it is hot, but once the glue has cooled, that it easily just peels off the, uh, the edge of the roller here. So as you can see, I'm just using my fingernail here, uh, just cleaning it off. So what I wanna bring your attention to now is our edge seat assembly right here. And as you can see, there is a piece of edge banding tape that is currently still lodged within the uh, seat assembly, but it has been severed down over at this side. So that will actually inherently cause problems with our edge banding tape being able to feed properly or attach to the side of our board. So that is something that you'll need to make sure that it is clear, totally cleared out and that, that there isn't any extra edge banding tape currently in there. And as you can see, I pulled out one piece, but there is still another piece that is in the back side here that'll need to be removed. So this is what uh, our edge banding will look like once it's complete and it's working effectively.